video. Today's video is me trying out fails for the last time before they get out of my collection. That's, I feel like the title's pretty self-explanatory. You probably know what you clicked on. These are not necessarily like the worst products of all time. If I had the worst products of all time, they would not be in my collection at all. They're literally leaving the moment they fail. These are like, you didn't impress me necessarily the first time. So you were a fail in my books. Like if you don't impress me, you're technically a fail. Uh, that's how I rate my stuff, but I'm willing to give you a second chance because it could have just been a issue of circumstance. Like we could have just been in a bad place that day with my face. I have a few things. Um, I'm going to use some stuff that I'm just using on a daily basis. Phoebe's running in. Hello. Say hi to everyone, baby. Come on up. Show everyone your face. You're so heavy now. She's a big chunk right now. There she is. There she is. Oh, straight paws. <laughs> okay, baby. We're gonna be trying some things that are in my project pan and some things, like I said, first impressions. I'll try to do, uh, I probably won't fit everything into one video. Um, I'll probably do some of these off camera um, only because I don't wanna do too many new things on my face at the same time because I feel like sometimes um, if you apply too many failed products at the same time and you're trying to test them out, one could be good because it's being placed on top of like a bad product. It can just look bad. So I'm just gonna do like not a lot at the same time. Mwah. So my social media will be in the description along with my drama channel, anything else you might need to find. So let's just get into it, okay? My hair is wild today. It's, um, this fringe just needs some work and then it'll be fine, but um, I'll do the fringe in a minute. Yeah, the fringe is a little, I had, I had my hair up in a bun. That's why it's a little wild right now. I actually need to do work, BB. I call her BB. I, I call her everything under the sun except for her name. Like her name is Phoebe. But I do call her pee pee poo poo, BB, anything else that is not Phoebe. <laughs> I feel like everyone does that with their dog. They give them a name and then they just receive a bunch of nicknames and no one uses their real name anymore. Uh, she does respond to her name though, so that's good. She doesn't respond to anything else. We just like to call her other stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna try the foundation. It's scary because I don't remember liking it very much, um, but that's fine. So I'm using just my trusted Fenty Beauty um, Dewy hydrating primer i feel like this might help the foundation look good because i remember it being really drying and just i remember it didn't look good when i applied it and then it looked good once it like warmed into my skin so i think like an hour or two after i did my makeup it looked fine and then the first application was kind of rough so that foundation is the huda beauty stick foundation i see some people using this and loving it this is in the shade Angel Food 110N. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna treat this the same way I treat my Vanish Stick Foundation from Hourglass. Me and this have a love hate relationship. Sometimes it looks great, sometimes it looks bad. Right now, me and her are having a good run. We're doing great. So I'm hoping that this will also do me good if I use my trusted, brand new Sigma Flat Kabuki Brush F80, best brush for stick foundation and any foundation, but mainly stick foundation. So. Just gonna do what I do with my hourglass and hope for the best. I mean, it feels pretty emollient. It feels about the same as the hourglass. I know it looks like I'm applying a lot and I am applying a lot. Like this is the mood that I've been in lately. Just like this very like smooth, beautiful covered skin. I don't know what it is about me. My mood for makeup changes like daily. Sometimes I want skin tints. Sometimes it's, you know, a full face of full coverage makeup. Okay, so far, it's better than what I remember. Not amazing though. Like, it looks fine, but it is clinging to some like less smooth areas. Yeah, the issue with it is it looks fine, but it's definitely foundation sitting on skin rather than like foundation blended into skin. So I feel like maybe that's why I enjoyed it a little bit later on in the day because it like settled in properly. But like, I don't want to have to wait for my makeup to look good because sometimes I'm like running out the house last minute and like, are you telling me I'm not going to look good for the first hour because my makeup decided to like not settle in properly? I don't know. I mean, it looks better on this side for some reason than this side maybe it's just a little more dry i don't know i don't know what it's really clinging to because i have no dry patches right now that's where we're at it's not as bad as i remember it being back then i feel like back then it just looked awful 
the first time I tried it, it was not good. But right now it's giving me mediocre foundation, which is still not enough to keep in my collection. But I will try to update you guys in the description box about things that I've decided to declutter versus keep. Um, so if you go into the description, I'll put like next to the products listed, I'll put what I kept, what I got rid of. And then you can make up your mind about, you know, what you want to do with it. Look, on camera, it looks amazing, right? Because everything looks good on camera. That's just how it is. That's just... I have this weird crease in my forehead. I think it's just from, like, the way I was, like, leaning on my face. I don't know. Okay. It's starting to warm into my skin and look half decent. Like, I think it's looking okay. Hmm. So, I'll do my whole face. And then I'll see, kind of, like... Let me put my hair back. This is really frustrating me. You know when you have, like, really curled hair? And it's all going in different directions. It can get a little bit annoying because it's getting in my face. And I hate watching beauty videos where someone is just... They just have hair in their face the whole video. I'm like, how? I look like Casper the Ghost. This shade is definitely not the best match necessarily. But as a whole, I think it's already doing much better than it did the first time. I'll think about this. I'll see how it wears, I'll see if maybe I can um, finish it kind of the way I used to finish the Hourglass foundation which is like mix it in with foundations I actually enjoy and use it more of like a spot conceal situation because it does have a lot of coverage, it's just, you know, not the best texture wise, I think it's fine. I mean look, it's already doing a thousand times better than it did. I feel like maybe once I apply bronzer and blush and highlight and setting spray it might actually be a good looking foundation. Uh, because I remember applying this for the first time when I was doing my full face of Huda and I was terrified. I was like, oh my god, it's clinging to every spot. It's not blending out. This actually blended out. It looks dewy. It looks skin-like. I think it looks fine. It looks good. I have three concealers that are on their way out. I, I used to love the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. But right now it just seems to not be working with my foundation. I'll leave this one. It's super thick. So I'll leave that one for another time. And then I have Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer and the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. Now... These are not necessarily fails. I just like to have a more curated collection of makeup right now. I recommended both of these to you guys when I did my full face of Milani and Elf. Um, and I still stand by that. But when I compare them to my other concealers, these are definitely like on their way out because they're not... Like if I can pick Pat McGrath or Elf, I'll just keep my Pat McGrath concealer because it's more expensive. Uh, and I like both, right? So if I have to like dial down my collection, I get rid of like the more affordable stuff because I'm not going to throw away a 30 pound concealer. So um, which one do I want to try first? I'll go in with the e.l.f. And I'll see how much I like it. I've only ever used it once. That's why I'm putting it into this box. These are not all fails. Like, I don't want this to sound like it's all a fail. Um, some of these are simply just like, I used it once and I don't know if I actually want to keep it. If I want to just hand it over to someone else. So um, if you guys want to know why I put some of this stuff in here, watch my face collection video um, and declutter. I'll put it into the description. Because some of these I just kind of explained in the sense of, um, I buy stuff purely for videos that I then recommend to you guys, but just because I recommend it to you guys doesn't mean it necessarily has a place in my collection, if that makes sense. Like, I love high-end makeup. I, If I have the choice of keeping high-end makeup or lower-end makeup, I'll keep high-end. And I only have a limited amount of storage in my house, so sometimes I have to get rid of stuff that I do enjoy to make space for things I enjoy more. So these concealers were not bad. They were just stuff that I didn't really necessarily have space for, and I thought... By the time I get to those concealers, they're going to be expired. So I'd rather give them to someone else when they're still brand new and fresh so they can enjoy the concealer and not have me not use it, it expire, have to throw it away and feel bad about it, right? It's like, do you know what I mean? Am I making sense? I feel like that's like the issue of having a YouTube channel is you don't get around to some makeup and then when you get to it, it's expired. Okay, but low-key, this concealer is really amazing. It's definitely staying in my collection. It looks super smooth under the eyes. It doesn't crease. Oh my God, it's a super like natural coverage, I'd say, like nothing too out of the ordinary, but like, look at this. And it's super smooth. It's not clinging to anything. It's got decent coverage, I'd say like a medium coverage. Okay, so this one is definitely staying. I love it. I think it's great. I remembered liking it, but I wasn't sure how much I liked it. And now looking at it, I think it's, it's a great concealer. I'll keep it around. And then next time I do my makeup, I'll try the Milani one and see how I feel about it. Okay, so e.l.f. concealer. I tried it for the second time now. And second time, I still love it. So if you guys want an affordable, natural finish, natural coverage 
concealer then go grab the elf hydrating camo concealer i haven't tried the original camo which was like matte i've only tried the hydrating one and it's really nice super natural i feel like you could get away with not setting it but um set might be better just depends how you're feeling look at that so far my base is really nice um i'm not seeing many issues with it which is great then we have on the way out is the nabla close up uh, baking and setting powder and translucent i think this is fine but the issue that i have with it is quite heavy so i have to be very gentle with it um otherwise i look a little crackly and dry i'm getting rid of it because yeah like it set my under eyes technically fine like there's technically nothing wrong with it but it's definitely not my favorite powder to use i feel like i have to be super careful with it to make sure that i'm not overdoing it um otherwise my concealer gets a little heavy looking and yeah i'm definitely getting rid of it i don't I don't like it that much and I have so many loose powders and it takes ages to get through a loose powder so I'm just like look I'd rather take something that I really enjoy and use it than have a mediocre powder that I'm using just for the sake of using it. I'm so glad to have like a non-judgmental audience most of the time I feel like you guys are literally just like you don't have to justify why you're doing things because I see so many beauty youtubers have to justify every single purchase and every single time that they cut something they're like oh my god, I, I, I really like it, but like, you know, and they like panic and squirm. And I thought you guys are just like, it's your money, your storage area, like you do whatever you want to do. We just want to watch you do it. And I was like, thank you so much. I feel so much less like, you know, anxious about filming some videos because I'm like, I know you guys, I know you're not going to take it the wrong way. Do I think this is a fine powder? Yeah, but like, is it my favorite? No, I think it's making me look quite dry on the forehead. You can't see on camera. I don't use any beauty filters, but it doesn't mean that I look like what you're seeing on camera in person, if that makes sense. Like you can see some pores in person, you can see some dryness. It's quite heavy, not my favorite. It's getting a little bit powdery on the nose as well because I never shave my nose, I only shave my actual face and then I don't shave my nose. So it's sticking to the peach fuzz and making it look more fuzzy. Nabla is out. Uh, so, so far Huda is, I'm not sure, I'll see how it wears throughout the day. Elf concealer is in. Nabla is out. So that's kind of how we're doing this so far. Um, so I have these that I was kind of on the fence about. Now I'll explain the history behind these. These are all Nabla products. There's a highlighter, there's a bronzer and there's a blush. Shades quickly. Ozone for highlighter. Ambra for bronzer. Lola for blush. These, I love the packaging. I love the way they look. Now I did, no I didn't do, I filmed a full face of Nabla video and it never got released because I was so negative in the video. Like I feel like the complexion looked awful. So then anything else I used, I was super like negative about. Because once your makeup starts going really bad, you can't turn it back around. Because you're just like, I already feel like garbage. I already feel ugly. So I just didn't release the video because I felt like it wasn't fair on the whole brand to judge it based on a few bad products. So what I'm doing is I'm trying the Nabla products on a good base. This, I'd say, is a good base. Not the best, but like good base. I'd leave the house like this. So I feel like maybe now is a fair chance to try these products again because I was not impressed with the bronzer or blush when I did my video but maybe it's because the complexion was so bad that it just didn't look good okay so let's just do this again and be more positive so I'm going to use the Sigma HD bronze it's an f29 brush into the bronzer oh wait oh wait there's the Too Faced palette this is I'm giving this a second chance this is supposed to be like the hourglass ambient finishing powders so I'm going to use that all over my face as a finishing powder and see if I like it. Do I like it? Hold on. I basically am putting this all over just to add some life back into my face. The way I would use the ambient lighting powder, just use it as like a finishing touch. It's got specks of shimmer in it. I don't know if that's because the brush is too big and I'm dipping it into the highlight or if it actually does have specks of glitter in it. I don't know. Hold on. Hmm. Hmm. I don't feel like it did anything. I'm gonna be honest with you, my skin looks exactly the same level of dryness. So I'll um, try these two along with the Nabla somehow. I'll probably use Nabla on the cheeks and then I'll try these on either like the chin area or the, the forehead. I just wanna see if I like this palette. So far this one is doing nothing for me. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I like the soft focus thing 
made no difference at all. So that's already the bulk of the palette, kind of useless to me. I prefer the Hourglass, I prefer the Becca, like this Becca one. The Light Shifter Finishing Veil, that one's really nice. It almost like blurs your skin and just makes it look really smooth and finished. This one low-key did nothing for me. Okay, so so far, one eh, is a big no for me. So I'll just try the other ones further down the video. I love doing these videos. I think, you know, I'll do these more often. I think this is a great idea. Okay, so I'll go into the bronzer uh, with the tip of my brush. I'm really not sure how much to pick up, but I'll pick up whatever. I'll use the mirror in here. I think the packaging is really nice. It's like really expensive feeling. It's very heavy and weighted, but product inside could be better. Um, I don't know which way I picked up the bronzer. So far, very light. I just don't think I picked up enough. Very light. Okay, hear me out. I think this bronzer is really nice for the intended purpose of being really lightweight, really buildable, not pigmented from the get-go, but it's blending really well. When I first tried it during the Nabla, you know, full face of Nabla video, it wasn't blending. It was really patchy. It looked, you know, just like a bad bronzer. Like, you know what a bad bronzer looks like? I don't have to explain it to you. This time, it is a seamless blend. Are you guys seeing this? This is why I love the idea of this video because I feel like sometimes you try a product and it was bad the first time for whatever reason, it wasn't great, right? And then you try it again and you're like, oh, okay. And usually, once I get turned off to a product, I don't want to try it again, which is like a flaw in my character and personality. Like I don't want to give it another chance. And these videos are basically going to force me to give products a second chance and possibly find products that I really enjoy. This is a product that I actually feel like I'll really enjoy. My bronzer is higher on this side, lower on this side. I have uneven cheekbones right now. This is embarrassing. I'm doing light taps because my makeup is not fully set. Like, yes, I went over with powder everywhere, but it was like a light dusting. It's not super matte or set, so I'm just tapping so I don't disrupt the foundation underneath. I think I had like a little wet spot of foundation right here, so I'll just blend it out. Definitely not a bronzer issue because it's blending super well everywhere else. It's just like this one spot here. I'm loving this bronzer. I think it's great. It's an amazing texture. Blends out super nicely. You're not overdoing it, so it's not dangerous. Like, you know you've got control over what you're applying to your face. I was about to give this one away. Like, I had it in, like, a box ready to be given away, like, a week ago. And I love it. Oh, my God. This is really nice. A, a Just a really gentle, but still usable bronzer. Really nice. Okay. Nabla is redeeming itself for me. Okay, the foundation is moving a tiny bit on my forehead. It's settling into pores, not even moving. It's like the moment I press my brush, the foundation just like sets into the pores. So I'm already kind of, you know, not super happy with that. Bronzer, big yes, love it. Looks amazing, look how blended that is. It's not harsh, it's not orange, it just looks great, it looks like a bronzer slash contour in one. And then we have this blush. I was kind of underwhelmed by the br blush, not brush, I was underwhelmed by the blush, um, but I'll try it again. I was about to give this away to someone, so maybe I'll actually really like it. Okay, just picking up quite a lot because this does seem to be like a more hardly pressed formula. Okay, well, it looks good. So like, clearly, Clearly it was just in that video, the complexion didn't look good. So then anything up on top just looked god awful. I applied a little bit too much. I was really happy to be, you know, experiencing this. So I just dunked my brush in and now it's, I look a little bit clown-like. That's fine. At least I know it's a good blush. I love the shade. I love that it looks very skin-like. Um, it's got a glow to it, which is nice. I love a glowy blush but it's not like it doesn't look powdery at all it's got like a, a baked formula i think so it's just um really good i always go in with the clean well whatever uh brush i used to apply powder i just take that i don't take any more product and i just go over bronzer and blush to make sure everything is seamless and blended and kind of tapped out um i mean it's 
it's just really nice okay so blush really good i apply some on my forehead always doubles as a little bit of a highlight really cute okay well um i was wrong these are really nice i'll put that into the yes pile then we have highlight okay so i'm just gonna go in with my regular um real techniques highlighter blush blush brush i keep on getting them mixed up Oh, and it looks stunning. Oh my God. I missed out on so many months of good highlight because I had some kind of a opinion based on a first impression that I didn't like these, but I actually love them. This looks so skin-like. Okay, out of the blush, bronzer and highlight, the highlight is the most chef's kiss beautiful thing. Oh my God. Run out and get these. Run out and get these because they are stunning so blinding but also super skin like no powderiness at all oh my god i look so glowy ah <laughs> i thought these were going to be not that great oh okay love it it's staying okay it's my new favorite highlight oh my god i'm so obsessed okay now i'm wiping off the highlighter brush on this like little cloth thing i have like this face wash cloth um, and I'm going to try the Too Faced everywhere else. So, um, I'll take the Glow, which is supposed to be, so they have like these three formulas. You have the Soft Focus in the middle, Least Shiny, then you have the Regular Highlight, and then you have Blinding Highlight. This one looks really, um, lackluster when you swatch it, but sometimes swatches can be a little bit, almost dropped it, misleading. So let me go into Glow, which is the less, like the medium glowiness level. Apply that to my chin. That's quite nice. Quite, quite nice. Quite nice. But also it has like these specks of glitter, but not like good specks of glitter, like kind of weird specks of glitter. I don't know. Let me apply this to my forehead. Ah, it's like a powdery glow. It's not actually glowy. It's just like... Oh, you applied highlight to your face, but it's not like glowy. Okay, so this one is no, this one, not my favorite. So I, I'm going to probably get rid of this regardless, even if this one's good, because I'm not going to keep this whole palette for this shade. It's useless. Um, How am I going to test this one? Because I don't want to ruin this highlight. Um, Okay. Let me take it on my finger. Look how dry this looks. It's just, it sounds dry. It feels dry. Okay, that's quite nice. Oh, I'm so conflicted. I'll take a little bit and apply it right in the center here. Um. Okay, this one's probably the nicest of all of them, but I'm probably going to get rid of this because it's not my favorite. Like realistically, these two are not that good and this one is fine but it's also not my favorite so i'll just get rid of this compared to everything else i have in my collection and compared to this one i just did a side by side you know it's it's like the happiness i felt for this one and then the mediocre feelings i felt for this one speak for themselves it's not a bad product it's just not making me happy right now so i'm just gonna get rid of it no i think that was it for the products that kind of frustrated me a little bit because uh, they were just like chilling in my collection not really doing anything collecting dust so i'll just be finishing my makeup with my regular products uh so i have the hydro oh wait yes hold on okay so uh for today's setting spray that i might be getting rid of because it's mediocre and i was going over this in my face collection video i don't know why i didn't put it in here it's the abh dewy set i used to love this thing and then i realized uh that once you get to about here it spits at you and then it also makes your skin look very greasy and if you spray it wrong it leaves, takes your makeup off in some areas, but I don't know, I used to really like this one, so I'll just give it a try. Let me, yeah, that looks fine, I guess, but like, oh no, 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 it left dots, as you can see. Um, This is a no from me. I hate, hate, hate the sprayer on this one. This is a fresh, brand new, I had to like spray a few times for it to go, like that's how new this is, and it's going away to another home. 
no thank you. I'll stick to my regular ones. I'll use the Milk Hydro Grip and the Fasali. I'm almost finished with this one. That was bad. That's exactly the experience I remember having with it. And I'm, yeah, I'm just not keeping it because like, look at this spray, right? No droplets. <laughs> I look wet right now. Just no, I'm not even going to explain why I'm not keeping that setting spray. You guys saw it, I saw it with my own two eyes. I used to be obsessed with it. Like I feel like, you know, your style of makeup and your expectations and standards change so much when you like grow and use makeup more and more that sometimes you go back to like your holy grails and you're like, how did I ever make this work for me? And like, I didn't make it work for me. I just kind of didn't have high standards back then, I guess, I don't know. Uh, or maybe they changed the spray or I don't know what happened to it. Cause I feel like I used to really love that setting spray. Um, I think that was my first introduction to dewy setting sprays though. And I feel like maybe my standards for dewy setting sprays weren't that high. So now that I've experienced good ones, I'm like, oh, that wasn't that great. Uh, then I'm gonna go with the Fasali. Like even this one, the spray is so good on it. Okay, right now the foundation is looking really nice actually. And where it's settled, it kind of fixed itself a little bit. Still using my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. This is where we're at as my primer for eyeshadow. And I'm using the Sigma Soft Blend Concealer Brush F64. I don't really feel like doing crazy eyeshadow today. I feel like I just want to kind of do something simple. So I'll take the That's Taupe Super Shock Shadow in Ritz and I'll apply that all over my eyelid. Eyeshadow blending brush. I should have done this the other way around, but oh well. I'll go into my glam palette from Natasha Denona and use blend and crease mixed together and swing that through the crease um, just to add a tiny bit of definition. This is such a simple thing to do. It just works. Um, just using basically like one shimmer shade, one matte shade. You can create a very stunning look. I'll go back into Ritz and just fix it up a little bit. This is like a super quick everyday look. I'm really not feeling like doing too much. I'm just bending that shimmer back into the matte. I will take just that same brush that I used for the inner for the crease, uh, wipe it all off, and put it into the inner corner shade up here. And just apply that into the inner corner. Because it's a fluffy brush, it applies much more lightly. So this was sent to me in PR by Charlotte Tilbury. It's this like double-sided pencil. One side's black and one side is the like Exaggerate Eyes Liner Duo Metallic and Matte. Um, someone used this on TikTok and they were like amazing. And I was like, yes, I have that. Let me use it. I used this to line my tight line, which is the black side. And that immediately makes your eyes look wider and makes them look, makes your eyelashes look more thick. Look at this so much nicer. It makes my eyes water when I do it though. So I go in and I just line kind of on the outer edge here. I've been doing this for all of my looks lately and I'm loving it. I either use a black or use a dark brown depending on kind of like the vibe I'm going for. And then I just gently flick it out. Even if it's chunky so far and not super like nice looking just just go along with it it's fine and then just do the same on the other side you don't have to be too careful you can be quite messy with this i feel like the more messy the better um but also it's, it's a pencil liner like you can fix it super quickly flick out join it back together and i do the same kind of here where line kind of like like as much as I tight lined, I kind of go back in and kind of like really fill in this inner corner bit and I leave pretty much the whole center empty. And it's like, that's what makes my eyes look more open and makes the liner look less dramatic while still getting the effect of a liner, you know? Sometimes I feel like a regular like liquid liner is just so dramatic, so difficult. And it just is like, it's just difficult to do, honestly. Um, and I don't have the energy for it most of the time. I'm just wiping off my brush. Sorry, that that's... Okay, I take an angled brush and I just go in and I start um, blending, okay? So I just smooth things out. That's why it can be a little bit messy when you're starting out because you're going to smooth it out anyway. The brush is just there to make it look less choppy and just a little more smooth, a little more 
like smoky and blended see it's more faded this way and i think because the brush blends it out and fades it out it just looks a little more natural and less like you know just more effortless less like you're trying and more like it's just like oh i just did this in two seconds because you did you did do it in two seconds and flicking it out the brush because obviously with a pencil it's difficult to do a skinny line a crisp line you can use the brush to just flick 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 and that blends it out and fades it out which actually gives you that sharp line then i go in with the light side i need to sharpen this one and i go on the water line and i feel like it just opens up the eyes can you see that bigger eye smaller eye without being too dramatic the way a white or a nude liner is very dramatic this one's just a subtle difference i also take it and i go on the skin here and on the skin right here and then in a corner highlight in a corner highlight it stays on for so much longer because it's not powder i even use that as a brow bone highlight sometimes very easy love that one okay so there's that Definitely not a fail. I love this palette so much. It's just good stuff. Then I'm just gonna do brows. I have no fails for brows. I'm just doing my thing. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury brow sheet. Brows are supposed to be cousins, like very distant cousins, not even like hanging out at family functions. They're just supposed to like exist in the family tree. That's it, brow gel. I have no fails for brow gel. I love brow gel in all forms. This is the legendary brows by charlotte tilbury mascara also no fails i got rid of a bunch of mascaras that i was kind of like iffy about um and i kept just the ones that i really enjoy legendary lashes volume 2 by charlotte tilbury focus it on the outer lashes first first layer you don't touch the inner corner you just do this outside bit right here outer corners done then i'm gonna do the lower lash line I mean the lower lashes while I'm at it and just waiting for things to dry. Now that that has dried up, we go in with a second coat of mascara. And now you apply it all over, okay? Making it more seamless. So, so far you've basically got two layers outer corner, one layer inner corner. We're just brushing out any clumps now, not taking any more mascara, not dunking into the tube, just blending out with this like dry-ish brush and look at that you got lift you might go in with a third layer if you're feeling fancy you know do whatever feels right to you this is what works for me i might do like a very gentle third layer i might regret this but i've been really into like dramatic lashes without applying false lashes like i like to see how far i can push it i'm just going to do the outer corner and leave the inner corner again so now we've got three layers outer corner one layer in a corner and i touched it in the same spot again that's just really unlucky for me i'm actually kind of upset about it then i'll do lips this is the barbie and colourpop collection this is not a product i'm trying to change my mind on these are like products i genuinely enjoy i'll do very victoria from charlotte tilbury it's just the most natural looking lipstick on me it just looks like lips so that's what i'm trying to go for here I think the outer liner being a little bit deeper just looks really nice. I will apply Fenty Sweet Mouth Lip Gloss over the top. Just to add some sparkle and shine into my life. And that is it for today's makeup. Powder, too heavy on me, not my favourite. Could have used it if, I, if it was my last powder, I would probably use it. But because it's not and I like other powders, I'm not going to use it. Foundation. It looks nice on camera. I'll give it one more chance. Okay, I'm being generous here. I'll give it one more chance and then it's out. This, not my favorite. This did nothing. This lackluster and has weird specks of glitter in it. This one was the best one out of the three, but I'm not gonna keep it for just that one. Spat at me. Concealer, incredible. Love it, super affordable, really nice formula. Looks smooth under the eyes, love it. These three, I could not have been more wrong about. Bronzer, seamless, blush glowy highlight mind-blowing 
And that is that for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, anything to comment down below, and subscribe to those videos every time I think of something to do. So hit that button to be notified when that's happening. Social media links and the links in the description. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.